eating chicken in there. A lab-grown chicken nugget. Chicken grown in a lab. Why are people making it? Climate change. Better for the environment. The environment. So I'm going to tell you what I just found out about lab-grown meat, and I can assure you, you are going to be disgusted. The source of this meat, they need fast-growing cells, replicating cells, just like when you have a farm that makes fruit from a tree. You don't want to plant a new tree every week. You want a tree that gives you a lot of fruit. And this is what they're trying to do with meat. And so what do they find? Well, there's something called an immortalized cell, also known as a HeLa cell. HeLa after Henrietta Lacks, who sometime in the 1950s had cervical cancer, and they removed her cancer cells, put them in a Petri dish to see how long they continue replicating and they're still replicating today so if you've already started to read in between the lines you may guess where i'm going with this that they realize the best source for fast replicating cells to make lab grown meat that you're going to eat are cancer and pre-cancer cells that means taking cancerous and pre-cancer cells literally putting them as the base and having those replicate to continue as a fast as possible pace produce the meat Imagine that you're going to eat small and it enough to float on a particle of dust that holds the keys to understanding cancer virology, and genetics. Luckily for us, such a thing exists in the form of trillions upon trillions of human lab-grown cells called HeLa. Let's take a step back for a second. Scientists grow human cells in the lab to study how they function, understand how diseases develop, and test new treatments without endangering patients. To make sure that they can repeat these experiments over and over and compare the results with other scientists, they need huge populations of identical cells that can duplicate themselves faithfully for years. But until 1951, all human cell lines that researchers tried to grow had died after a few days. Then a Johns Hopkins scientist named George Guy received a sample of a strange-looking tumor, dark purple, shiny, jelly-like. This sample was special. Some of its cells just kept dividing and dividing and dividing. When individual cells died, generations of copies took their place and thrived. The result was an endless source of identical cells that's still around today, the very first immortal human cell line. Guy labeled it HeLa after the patient with the unusual tumor, Henrietta Lacks. Born on a tobacco farm in Virginia, she lived in Baltimore with her husband and five children. She died of aggressive cervical cancer a few months after her tumor's cells were harvested, and she never knew about them. So what's so special about the cells from Henrietta Lacks that lets them survive when other cell lines die? The short answer is, we don't entirely know. Normal human cells have built-in control mechanisms. They can divide about 50 times before they self-destruct in a process called apoptosis. This prevents the propagation of genetic errors that creep in after repeated rounds of division. But cancer cells ignore these signals, dividing indefinitely and crowding out normal cells. Still, most cell lines eventually die off, especially outside the human body. Not HeLa, though, and that's the part we can't yet explain. Regardless, when Dr. Guy realized he had the first immortal line of human cells, he sent samples to labs all over the world. Soon the world's first cell production facility was churning out six trillion HeLa cells a week. And scientists put them to work, in an ethically problematic way, building careers and fortunes off of Henrietta's cells without her or her family's consent, or even knowledge until decades later. Admitted to Johns Hopkins in 1951 for the diagnosis and treatment of cervical cancer. Unfortunately, she had a very aggressive cancer, and within a year, she had died. As part of the care she received at Johns Hopkins, the cells from her cervix were brought into a laboratory and cultured, and have become the first human living cell line, which has allowed us to learn remarkable things about how human cells function. It was really, in my opinion, the launch pad probably the greatest discovery in biomedical research in the last half of the 20th century. It has led to numerous discoveries and development of technologies. It provided the ability for us to understand um, how cells grow, how cells divide, whether cells can survive in extreme climates, going into outer space, how radiation damages cells, um, how we can produce lots of material to make things like vaccines, which is all part of what the HeLa cell has done for, 
for science and for Bill Gates' lab-grown meat causes cancer in humans who consume it, according to a disturbing new study. Synthetic meat has been heavily promoted by Bill Gates and the globalist elites at the WEF as the solution to so-called climate change. However, this fake food has now been shown to cause cancer via immortalized cell lines used to manufacture it. Not content with poisoning your heart with mRNA vaccines while he sends your grandma to a death panel for being useless, Gates wants you to sit down at the dinner table to eat his repulsive tasting synthetic meat, which just so happens to riddle you with incurable cancers. But there is just one problem for Bill Gates and his globalist cronies. We are onto them. The people are waking up, and thanks to people like yourself who are spreading the word regarding the real agenda of the elite, the globalists' plans are starting to fall apart at the seams. Reporting on the globalist elite is a full-time job because, as the Bible tells us, wicked doesn't sleep. Take Bill Gates as a case in point. Rather than admitting that humanity has woken up to the truth about the disastrous experimental COVID-19 jabs, Gates, who is not a doctor or a dietitian, is doubling down and taking it upon himself to force the Western world to eat disastrous, experimental synthetic meat. The National Pulse shined a light on this issue in February, citing a Bloomberg story about Gates' fake meat crusade. The February story by Joe Fassler explained why Bill Gates' fake meat companies use immortalized cell lines for their products. Normal meat cells don't just keep dividing forever. To get the cell cultures to grow at rates big enough to power a business, several companies are quietly using what are called immortalized cells, something most people have never eaten intentionally, Fassler wrote. While immortalized cell lines are a staple of medical research, Fassler noted that these are technically precancerous and can be fully cancerous at times. The problem is that the materials used to make the product, immortalized cell lines, replicate forever, just like cancer which means, in effect, that they are cancer. Industry types are confident that eating such products poses no risk, but it's not difficult to see, even if the products are proven safe, how people might be put off by the thought that they're eating a glorified tumor. The dangers of fake meat made using immortalized cell lines come from the fact that long-term safety data for its consumption are not yet available. You shouldn't be surprised. After all, it's not the first time Gates has attempted to push an experimental product on the masses in order to generate enormous profits for himself and catastrophic results for the rest of humanity. The Furin Cleavage site gave the game away regarding the COVID vaccine's real origins, with a sequence painted by Moderna three years before COVID was even a thing found in the virus's DNA. As for Gates' fake meat, it is the immortalized cells that have exposed the elite's agenda. Fassler pointed out that immortalized cells in these products can multiply aggressively and indefinitely if placed under the right conditions. This brings with it safety, but also image concerns, he wrote. To back up Fassler's points, the National Pulse cited an instance where New York City Democrat Mayor Eric Adams, a vegan, attended a VIP event sponsored by a cultured salmon manufacturer, Wild Type. While several attendees enjoyed tasting the cultured salmon, Adams excused himself and left the event without taking a single bite of the fake fish. Aside from the immortal cells in lab-grown meat being carcinogens, ingredients in these products that are meant to mimic the taste and texture of the real thing can also cause all manner of serious health issues. 